Hey folks, Steve here with a little bit of a, I don't know, <laughs> uh, easy peasy video for you today, um, one that probably won't be very long, but just one I thought I'd do uh, since I haven't been able to do a video in a few days, even with, you know, the virus situation and, and being uh, home, um, just don't have as much time to do all the things I'd like to do on camera. Um, 1870 stuff is happening in the background. Um, making some improvements there or suggestions uh, for that game, and, and we'll see what comes out of it. I have another game that I'm thinking about putting on camera, um, and I realize i got to reread the rules for it and kind of look through the materials before I start playing it. It could even end up being I go back to 1870 and uh, play this other game which I won't reveal quite yet because I'm not sure I'm definitely going to be playing it or not. So I could be doing two different games at once, right? And on different tables and recording and doing videos for both simultaneously. Uh, that might be interesting. But for this one, I just thought it would be interesting um, to talk about the Dark series as we know it today. And you can see I'm, I'm, I'm bending the definition of the Dark series a little bit. Um, and this is in light of a designer interview that Ted Racer did um, with the playersaid.com and at some point I, it'd be fun to do an interview with Ted at some point along the way um, I don't know what I would ask him that hasn't already been asked but hey maybe someday um, but you know the the funny thing about the interview that he did with the players aid is it gives a brief little glimpse into the future of the series and I'll put the uh, the link to the interview down in the comp or down in the description, I should say, and, and you'll be able to to read that. I think it's an interesting read. Um, they did a good job. Uh, those guys over at the Players Aid and, and talking to Ted. And Ted gave some interesting answers. You know, when we look at the Dark series as we understand it, I mean, it principally was really the Dark Valley, which was the first game. And when it came out some years back, you know, it it was you know, pretty popular or somewhat popular, you know, it had garnered enough of a following that when they did the reprint, they did this deluxe edition, right? And you, you've seen me cover Dark Valley to death. And I, you know I like it, right? It's a good game. Um, and then some years after that, uh, there was the Dark Sands. Um, that's being the North Africa game. And that's sort of like the, you know, the, the release of the Dark Sands was basically... Um, a statement of saying, like, hey, the dark noun <laughs> um, is, a, is a repeatable title. That's a, seri that's a game series that include, you know, similar design concepts and um, it has something to do with the geographic uh, nature of wherever the fighting is. And it's just kind of interesting to see uh, that, you know, that this is a system that is working for people. The whole chit pull, the operational combat. Now, it's not something like, you know, the, the ETO system that Frank Chadwick's working on, where, you know, everything is supposed to link together and be some big, massive system. This is instead, you know, Ted is looking at a particular subject at a, at a specific geographic area, and he's doing an operational game on that, and including, you know, specialized rules for that specific conflict that won't necessarily be in each game in the series. Now, something I've chosen to do is include Case Yellow 1940 in the series. Now, this is a game that came out back in 2011. I believe it only got the one printing. I, I purchased my copy pre-owned. Pretty sure it's got all the counters. I'm, I'm reasonably confident. And I haven't played it yet. And something I'm thinking about is, you know, as I've covered the Dark series up to this point, right, I did a full playthrough of the Dark Sands, because I got that first, and, and I enjoyed that. I did a review. Um, you know, I'm looking forward to, you know, if they ever do a, a Dark Sands reprint, it getting a deluxe edition, because I think it could really benefit from it, and it's a game that probably deserves a better treatment. But the, the Case Yellow game came out a while ago, and is technically not part of the Dark series. Technically, right? There's no Dark in the name. However, um, looking at the game's design, and, and looking at what's in the game, and you can see, it, it is basically the invasion of uh, the Low Countries and France. Basically, if I were to call out, you know, what is the, what is the game covering? What are you doing? It it is um, basically the campaign to knock France out of the war and to take over the the, the Low Countries. Um, 
And even if you could say, like, there's some parts of this game, it, it seems like where it's like, well, if you play the historical scenario, it's it's balanced against the allies. But there there are other scenarios in the game that allow allow you to play out different situations, which makes it, I think, worthwhile to play. Um, but the thing that ties it to the Dark Valley series is that it is, you know, again, an operational game, and one that relies on chit pool. There is a chit pool um, mechanism here, and it is, you know, it, it, this kind of flipping through the rules. It has a lot in common with the Dark Sands, with the Dark Valley in that way. There are ways for units to become disordered, uh, just like in the Dark Sands. Now, there's some nuances there. There are things that are in this game that are not in the other games, but if you were to look at it alongside these other two, and I'm, you know, my camera's only capturing so wide a picture here. Um, I definitely see it as connected to these games. Like it, it, it is a dark game before the dark series became a thing, right? Um, and, and it's Case Yellow 1940, the German Blitzkrieg in, in the West. Now, what I think would be really interesting is if GMT could be convinced to do a reprint of this game, right? So, you know, hey, Dark Valley got reprinted, got Deluxe Edition. Maybe the Dark Sands will get reprinted, it'll get a Deluxe Edition. It would be very cool if Case Yellow got sort of a um, an updated treatment. You know, it got a once-over by Ted on the rules and, and incorporating whatever errata might be out there, maybe sprucing up a few things, whatever, however you want to look at it. But the benefit of this being then you could you could retitle it and really bring it into the Dark Fold and call it I've joked, I've joked, and it's like it's like a bad joke, a terrible joke, Steve. You say, aha, the dark yellow, you know, it's it's a joke about things being yellow. Um, and you can, I'll let your imagination run wild, but um, bad joke, Steve. Case Yellow 1940, you could call it something else, right? You could still call it Case Yellow 1940, right? That sub, you know, East Front 1941, 1945, and say, hey, Case Yellow 1940. And you could call it, um, I don't know, the the dark planes I, I don't know the dark something right the dark something um and and bring it into the fold but the thing is something interesting you know if you go read that interview um from the player's aid and i sort of got off on a tangent there but bring it back to that that blog post um of theirs with the interview is that ted has other stuff coming now, we know this a little bit already. There's going to be the Dark Summer. Um, and in the Dark Summer, um, it's going to be Normandy, basically, right? So so you'll have, um, you know, that game that will cover the landings at the beaches and, and a little bit of the, you know, uh, push uh, of the Allies against the Axis in northwestern France, and that will be an interesting little, little game, a ten-turn game. Probably, you know, it feels like it's going to be a little bit lighter than, you know, quite a bit lighter than the Dark Valley, probably not too far different from the Dark Sands or even Case Yellow. Um, but it will be an interesting addition to the series, right? So I'll technically make three games, plus Case Yellow makes four if you want to count it. Um, yeah, if you got suggestions for what we, we could call Case Yellow the Dark something or other, um, leave some comments in the in the section below, in the comment section below. Let me know what you think. I'd be interested to figure out what we, what we would call it, right? That'd be fun. Uh, make a suggestion to Ted and GMT to, to give this uh, another print, you know, nine years later, almost ten years later. Um, so so then what comes next, right? So, so Dark Summer's coming. Um, it looks like it's probably mostly being done design. So what comes next? Well, you know, Ted actually has an answer for that, apparently, and, um, uh, and this is where things get kind of interesting, that um, he's going to have a game that's going to be published by another publisher that's not GMT. Um, and it's going to be titled The Deadly Woods. I think it's Compass. I'll have to double check. Or maybe it's Revolution Games. Maybe that's who it is. I'll have to double check the, the article. Um, but, but Ted's going through another publisher to publish this game. And I guess, you know, there, there was a note in the, in the interview that was saying um, that GMT is sort of asked to keep the GMT published games with the dark moniker, um, and but this other game is going to get published and it's going to be called The Deadly Woods and it's going to cover uh, Battle of the Bulge. And so you have, you know, another game that's sort of, you know, if you think of it, it's like, okay, you could play The Dark Summer, that's, hey, that's Normandy, and then you move on to um, The Deadly Woods uh, being the Bulge game that's later uh, in 1944 and in 45. Um, 
and and play that right you could you could play that and it would be interesting and it there's very little information out there uh, on the deadly woods in fact i think that interview is the only time it's been mentioned that i can find i'm gonna have to google a little harder <laughs> and check out revolution games website if that's who the publisher is going to be um but it sounds like you know it, it's going to be a dark system game right it's going to have the chip pull it's going to have an operational feel it's going to have the more specialized rules for the specific conflict in play. Um, and so, you know, it's almost like I have to start calling this the Dark and Dead Deadly series, right? The Dark and Deadly, um, which is like, it sounds like a and d game or something, you know, a and d retro clone, if you know what that is. Um, the Dark and, dark and Deadly games, um, which is kind of interesting, right? So then you're, then now we're talking, we're on uh, four games plus Case Yellow being five, Dark and Deadly games, right? So we're taking on that, um, ever expanding. And then there was something that he mentioned that I found very interesting, which was he mentioned he wants to do a. My camera screwed up, which is really annoying. Um, <laughs> so so yeah, so he so Ted's looking at a Pacific War game, uh, the Dark Seas or the Deadly Seas, I guess, depending on whoever's going to publish it. Um, and if it's like Empire of the Sun, which is a a single mapper game of the whole Pacific, and and maybe you know Ted will zoom in, or maybe he'll he'll focus on particular areas. Who knows? Um, it might not be the entire Pacific War. That might be really hard to do with a chit pool. Um, but gosh, we did the whole East Front of World War II um, via chit pool. So who who knows? Um, I find that idea really interesting because um, you know the Pacific War is a pr pretty interesting. You know part of World War II, right? You, you look at it and you sort of understand it. it's not just masses of infantry moving around. What it really is is this um, interlocking uh, progression of taking airfields and taking air, uh, or taking, uh, taking shipyard naval bases, um, all to put, you know, your land-based air in the right areas for better coverage, so that you can eventually start, you know, bombing Japan more easily and and taking these critical supply uh, areas um, to basically bypass and cut supply to Japanese forces on islands and stuff as the as the allies and I don't know it's like it's like a, it's got its own whole thing that in terms of a chip pull system you'd have to wonder like how, how will that work what would that look like um, what kind of chits would be involved right what what could you do? Would it be like task force chits? You pull this chit, you can activate this task force to to move and perform a, a, a mission, a naval air mission or something. I mean, there's just, there, there's interesting ways that it could all come out and it could be really awesome or it could be, you know, maybe that's not the right path and, and the design doesn't get very far um, and he, he decides not to publish it or maybe it's not going to work out. I don't know, but it's really interesting to me that it, it, you know, it's feasible. You could try it. Um, and maybe you could even do things that are not even necessarily uh, the, 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 the whole Pacific, right? It doesn't have to be naval based. You could do uh, Southeast Asia. You could do operational games in China. I mean, there's a, there are things out there um, that you could still try to apply the system towards. Um, and, and I guess the limit is just how far does Ted want to take the design? Um, but, you know, if I were to put my thought on like my experience with the Dark Valley and the Dark Sands. I, I like the system. I, I think it's really interesting. It mixes it up more and is more solo friendly than your typical I go, you go system. It, it just provides that fog of war that games like that can't, you know, you can't really account for. Like a hex encounter game that doesn't have hidden movement or something. You're just looking at the board. That's what it is. The only thing you don't know is how well the dice are going to go, right? But with the Dark System, Deadly system, dark and deadly system. Um, you know that chip will really helps and, and puts some boundaries around what you can even do, what you hope you can do. You can still be, you know, maybe not surprised, but things can happen before you can react to them. And I think that's a really important part of the operational feel of the game. Um, so from here, I'm not sure what comes next for for me and the channel in this series. I mean, I the more I look at uh, Case Yellow over here, the yet-to-be-renamed Dark Game, I guess. Um, I, I'm thinking I'd like to cover it on the channel at some point. I don't know how soon that would be, right? We've, we've got a lot of other stuff to look at, but, you know, having been on a roll with the Dark series, it's certainly an appetizing thought for me um, that would be 
kind of, you know, back to back to back, same type of games if I did it very soon. Um, something I'm, I want to look at. And when the Dark Summer comes out, I will probably jump on that pretty quickly, uh, depending on where I'm at and playing other games. So, I don't know. I, but I'm feeling good with the system. Like, I've, I've gotten the basic feel that I expect out of these games that I play, I'm going to have a pretty good experience with them. They're going to be pretty uh, entertaining games. So, I don't know. If you've watched all my videos on these, you, you'll, you'll at least on these two, you'll know how I feel. Um, and I know that some folks don't like the game, these games, or they, they don't like the chit pool, or they don't think the Dark Valley does the East Front correctly, and I, I don't know, I think it does it pretty, pretty well. All, all around the boundaries of what you expect out of a simulation, and what you expect out of a game, or both, or however you want to look at it. Um, but I like it, so you'll be sure to see more on the channel eventually. Um, so as we do this sort of little retrospective, uh, on the series, the Dark and Deadly series, I guess, is what eventually we, we should refer to this as. Um, Cross-publisher cross publisher game series. Um, I don't know, let me, let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. I uh, appreciate the dialogue with folks, even if I disagree with you. It's interesting to hear what people think. Uh, if you've played Case Yellow and you have opinions on Case Yellow, let me know. Um, if you'd really like to see Case Yellow covered on the channel sooner rather than later, let me know. If you want to see some other stuff, uh, let me know that too, I guess, as we um, take a look at uh, all the other stuff on my gaming shelves and more games to come in time. Um, and yeah, I think that'll do it for this one, guys. Relatively short video, but just something to keep you entertained in the meantime uh, until the next real gameplay video comes out. Um, we'll see you in the next one, guys. Stay safe. Take care. Keep on gaming.